All right, folks, uh, thanks a lot for coming here today. Um, so this is an open source project we just launched. Uh, my name is Meryl Fernando. I'm a product manager in the Microsoft Entra team. But this uh, Maester, this open source thing that we built is outside of uh, my day job, so just a side passion that we built. Um, yeah, so before I start, just want to thank all the sponsors who made it possible today, um, and for Microsoft to uh, allow me to fly out all the way from Melbourne to be here this week and uh, share in the partial love. Right, so Maester, it's a security test automation framework. Um, well, you could use it for things outside of security as well. Um, I just shared, we just timed it so it launched today uh, when <laughs> uh, for this session and um, I shared this earlier in the day today. It's a lot of good response from the community, from everyone trying it out. Um, so you are, you are the first to sort of listen in on a session about Maester itself. Right, so just to get set some context on why uh, we built this, uh, what, what reason is there is, um, so Gartner predicted, this was back in 2021, that uh, more than 99% of cloud breaches would be because of preventable configuration. And uh, this was in 2021, they mentioned it. And if you've been following the new news, you'll know that it's sort of uh, true, right? In 2024, um, we are seeing lots of um, security breaches every day and it, it is uh, coming out as um, things that were related to misconfiguration settings because the cloud moves so fast, there are so many settings and uh, it's becoming hard. So there, there is also the Microsoft Digital Defense Report we publish every year from Microsoft. Um, this was from last year as well and one of the things they identified as well is misconfiguration and um, exposure of identity platforms specifically because that's the gateway into the rest of the systems. Um, it's, uh, it's a high vector that attackers are targeting. Right, so in reality, in a lot of uh, tenants, uh, people have been managing Microsoft 365. This is usually what happens, right? You need to go in and make changes in your tenant. Maybe it's even conditional access policies or some settings. Um, you rarely have a different tenant where you try things out. Um, you just do all these things in production. So um, just to give you some examples, right, of a, a few customers I've been working with. Uh, so there was one customer that had like a conditional access policy that enforced uh, MFA for all of their guests um, and said, you know, you need to sign out every uh, 14 hours so that there's a fresh sign in uh, if you're a guest coming in. So they set up that policy, it was all put in place um, and it was all good or so they thought. A year later, they discovered that for almost a year, someone had gone and deleted the group or emptied the group that it was assigned to. Um, so they didn't touch the conditional access policy itself. They just deleted the group. So the policy was all there, but it was not doing anything, right? And, and no one knew that they were in that state. They didn't, they, the policies were there. They thought it was all working um, because the employees are not guests. So they didn't use a guest identity. And the guests didn't complain that, you know, they were not getting MFA or they were getting signed out. So the guests were happy because they signed in on their home PC and it stayed signed in for the rest of the year. Um, so that's, that's an example of, you know, settings where it's not even something an admin makes a mistake, um, could be related to that, but it could be various other things that could cause these issues, right? So that's the, the thing, that's one of the motivating factors for building um, what we are calling as Maester, like a test automation framework. Uh, what we wanted to do here was a lot of you already in this state, right? You know DevOps, you know what it is, uh, you use it. Um, but to a lot of admins uh, across the globe, it's something that's like magic or they, like they don't understand it and it's either too hard. Um, so it's not something they really want to think about when they're managing their Microsoft tenants, they like the graphic UI, they just click on things and they're happy with that. Um, so what we want to do with uh, Maester and this such is to bring these sort of practices to, um, to a broader audience of IT admins and cybersecurity folks, uh, people who manage uh, Microsoft cloud tenants, things that are really very critical to an organization's uh, data to protect themselves. So you know the usual DevOps flow is supposed to be 
that you make any change, it's all through an automation system. No one goes and touches the UI. Um, you have everything in source code. Um, you deploy changes, whether it's conditional access policies or your security config to you know, configure Teams or SharePoint. Um, that's, that's sort of the nirvana, the nice world that everyone wants to be in, uh, where it's all automated and you do those deployments. Now, it's a lot hard to start automating all of that and writing all of those in scripts for a lot of organizations, right? I think for this audience, you would say that's, that's easy, right? That's what we do every day and that's what you should be doing. Um, but in reality, that's not what happens in a lot of orgs. So with Maester, what we're trying to target is the first few steps, which is, okay, you might not be able to configure, do all of that through code and use policy as code to deploy. Um, but what we are saying is, uh, let's try starting to test because that's where you get some value immediately. You can have some tests written that uh, test your policy of what the settings should be in a particular tenant, um, whether it's security related or you know otherwise. You can write those tests and you can um, keep validating, set up a daily automation and you can follow that process. So that's the whole reason behind what we're building with Maester and we want to make it very approachable to people who are not DevOps, right? So um, we have the instructions, the, the sort of the package that we build from the website to the guidelines to the actual module itself is to make it all really easy. So, I'll give you a demo of how that works. I did a recording, but um, I'll show you what it is, right? So I uh, start off by installing the Maester module. Um, it's, we bundled it as a PowerShell module. Uh, we've included some out of the box tests. These are all pester tests. Um, so you would just need to say, so if I just say, it's an empty folder that I'm in. Um, so we wanted to make it really easy for them. Um, and so we included some tests. So you run this install Maester tests and it installs a bunch of out of the box tests that we've defined as part of the Maester team. Uh, we have this folder and right now if you, um, let me open it in code. We've created these tests with um, Uh, the initial focus has been on Entra and we've done a lot for conditional access policies and there are all these other Entra related tests that we've written as well. So we uh, made it really easy so they don't, like you don't even need to come into VS Code. You're doing all this in PowerShell, you install the module and then we've written an invoke uh, Maester which is like invoke Pester, um, just a wraparound of Pester uh, module itself. So it runs through a bunch of tests that we've done. It calls Graph API, and I'll dig a little bit into that. Um, goes through your tenant, uh, pulls all of the different settings. We've written a bunch of tests that we think uh, would be uh, useful, and it generates this sort of report. So it takes the pester results that you get from the XML that you get, and gives it in a way that's very accessible to users and IT admins. So you get a summary of uh, all of your tests, uh, breakdown by category on what passed and what failed. Um, so you go from like not having Maester to having Maester and running this test. If, if you saw this, it took just like two minutes and that was part of uh, the, the experience we wanted. So you could do it as a one-time thing. You run this, you get a bunch of tests. Um, one of this is called the AIDS car. Uh, there was an MVP in Germany, Thomas, who built this uh, Enter ID security config with lots of settings. He mapped it to the MITRE uh, framework and um, came up with what the settings should be for that security level. And we go into the tenant, check if those settings are the same. Um, and then if it's something that's failed, then that's called out. Uh, we built a lot more out of the box um, real policies related to conditional access as well. And so we, you go in there, you click through, you can see what are the policies uh, it tested and the output it gave. Um, and the neat thing is, um, it's not just the technical end unit results. We give you sort of like links to be able to click through. So this will actually take you into the conditional access blade. So you can open and uh, view what's, um, what the setting is that it needs to be fixed. Um, yeah, so this, this whole thing is sort of an HTML report that you generate and uh, it gives you these uh, results from there. 
Any questions, queries on this so far? Yes. You would need to have uh, a reader access. So you, you need to consent to the permission first, um, but you, uh, it, it needs a few directory scopes, so like a global reader. So it all depends on the test that you need, and I'll come to how you can like, write your own tests as well. So I was really happy to see all the PESTA sessions this uh, week, so many including Justin's workshop, because all of this is built on top of PESTA, um, and we, with this, we hope lots of lots more admins will get used to or learn about PESTA as well, and be able to start writing their tests. Right. So if I go back to my things, I'll ignore this because I just ran that. Yeah. So just to walk you through the framework, right? So. Be built based on top of PESTA. So initially, our plan was just to write a bunch of PESTA tests and put it on GitHub and give it to folks and be able to run it. Um, so that's how we started. But as we worked on this over months, uh, we realized for admins, running PESTA, going through that and understanding what it is that they need to do was going to be a little harder. So we started wrapping it around uh, with the master module was just born out of that. Um, so we created this module. We include a bunch of commandlets uh, for helping to write these tests. So those are basically graph API calls, but we put in a lot of the, the logic into that. Right, so that gives um, like a very usable way for admins. Uh, we wrote this emailing capability out of the box to sending, sending out reports. Um, and the whole interactive test report that you saw, again, an HTML-based thing that we uh, generate out of that. Uh, so out of the box, we also have the AIDS car tests, the security config tests, and the intra tests. And since we launched today, we've had so many people reaching out to us saying, I want to add you know, Azure-related tests to this. So uh, we want to build this community of you know, the different type of tests that people would want to include. Uh, maybe it's about baselining, maybe it's about performance, um, whatever the different types of uh, things we want to build like a single platform that people could contribute PESTA tests into. Um, and it would be easy for admins to understand and reuse it themselves. Uh, yeah, and the biggest, the most important part is custom tests, writing your own tests uh, for your tenant. So you're creating a new security policy, a new control, conditional access policy, or you're creating a new security group, a simple thing, right? a group that assigns, you assign all the M365 licenses uh, to that one group. So you need to make sure that group is always there and you know you at least have the minimum number of users in that group. And so you can write a test just for that and you have it running every day to make sure you know your tenant is in a healthy state. Um, so as you introduce changes, you will know what is important for you and you'll say, okay, let me put that in a policy. So that way, even if someone leaves the org, right? You might work for a company and then move off. The intent is all in code, and you'll you like someone five years down comes, those tests would still be running. And if they make a conditional access change, which you know breaks that policy, they'll um, you'll be able to know. Okay, I've done something wrong. Let me try and fix that. And the person who did those changes doesn't even need to be there in the organization, right? As long as those tests are there and they're running. Right, so just a quiz from what the name Maester is for. Does anyone, do you remember what the pop culture reference is from? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah. So um, Sam Tari and the others. So the Maesters were like, they held all the knowledge and they knew uh, the, you know, the right ways of doing things. Um, and you only have to, you know, read those uh, books and follow the instructions. So in the same way, we want the Maester test or Pester tests to be the things that, you know, you code your environment config, the security, the intent more. Uh, when it comes to security, it's more the intent. What is, what is the intent of what you want to do? Put that into code, right? So uh, for those who know PESTA, you'll go like, isn't this all just PESTA, right? And like, as I said, absolutely true, right? You, at the end of the day, the tests you write are just purely PESTA tests. You can call Graph API or Azure or any API, um, it's just, basic PESTA test, it's just taking PESTA and applying it to your cloud. Because a lot of people are used to PESTA to be just, you know, your VMs, your machines, and infrastructure as code. 
and we want to make this a practice of hey thinking about using this for your cloud configuration as well you know moving on to the the next phase right so as i mentioned the the reasons why um, we wanted why we created Maester is to make it more approachable, right? So I'll give you an example, which uh, you might or might not realize is say, if I um, run this with, you know, the normal verbosity in Pesta, um, and uh, no, that's, was it that one? Yeah. So this is how, if it just runs with the verbosity, and I know Justin said the other day, Look how beautiful it gives you all the errors, and it's nice. So it's it's good for us devs, <laughs> right? But when it go when you go to an admin or you know the manager of the IT team, uh, if you give this to them, they'll go like, "What what's this? Why are you what do I even do with this?" Right? So that's the reason we took uh, this result out, and we created this sort of um, a nice, easy to understand report, which uh, can be you know shared with uh, folks. Right, and then you build that over time. So it's basically taking the same JSON. We added some nice things in here and made the report more easier to understand. Um, the, it we translate the error result and we give more meaningful information about what they should do. Um, so you can go into Graph Explorer from here. Um, you can go to the docs. Um, so you can enrich your test with the information on what the what the admins should do. Right, so another part of all of this is the website. It's sort of like the companion um, to Maester. We we built this with Docusaurus. I saw the session the other day, you know, about creating docs sites and so on. Um, so we give like all of these step-by-step -step installation guides, um, going and setting it up in GitHub, uh, going through all of the steps, doing things like uh, workload ID configuration, which is like using a more secure way of setting up identity auth, where you don't need secrets or certificates. Um, so this GitHub steps, if you follow, you really, a person can just set this up just using a browser. You can set up this daily automation. You just go import the repository. We have a, a sample repository that you have. You import it in. Um, you set up the actions. We, we give you like, um, like a GitHub YAML file as well. Um, just follow the steps, copy the tenant ID across, and in about 10, 15 minutes, you'll have like a daily automation that's up and running uh, with those reports being generated. Um, and we also include like an email notification as well, right? So uh, that's all part of the, the flow, the bundle. So within about 10, 15 minutes, you're not a DevOps person, but you'll be able to set this up. So we worked on creating this as a complete package. So you can uh, like, assuming someone who has no knowledge of DevOps or GitHub or like or even PowerShell can run it, set it up, and uh, and then find their way after they set it up to say, okay, like now can I go and uh, write my own test and customize it, um, and that's the the flow we wanted to take. Right. So out of the box, I've uh, told you about this test, and the key thing, the richness of this will come with custom tests. Right. So the whole idea is you start writing your own test for your own tenant as you make changes and your configuration and your policies, you roll them out. Um, so here's a simple example of this, right? So end of the day, it's a really simple PESTA test, which anyone could have done even before <laughs> Maester was introduced, right? Um, where, for example, you have a list of global admins that are defined, you know who they are, it's not going to change uh, frequently. So you put that in code and that's your intent, your policy. You put that in and this test basically queries and finds out who's in the global admin role and gives it in an easy to understand English-like syntax, right? You say uh, global admins should be in the approved global admins list, right? And the moment someone else is added, this test would fail and then you'll know, right, someone's added someone as a global admin, right? It could be by mistake uh, or you know they could have legitimately added someone new then you would come in and update the test and say it's there so it's a way for you to define that policy the neat thing the thing that started off maester is this new thing in conditional access which is a new what if api so for those who don't know conditional access um, is the security policy that you define in intra or azure ad where you say what you whether you need mfa and things like that um, there was no way to test it until 
basically today, right? Um, I got permission, it's in public preview, it went out public preview. Uh, I got the approval to sort of announce it today. So we created an easy to use API around it and showed with Pester. So what you can do is the intent here, for example, is share, accessing to SharePoint should require MFA, right? So you might write a document saying, okay, this is the company security policy. SharePoint access should require MFA or Outlook should be MFA or if you need to be on the local network before you can access the device, right? So you have a document and someone else writes the conditional access policy and puts it in and over time things happen, they change the policies and no one really knows if what they intended, the policy is what is actually implemented, right? Is it the same, Is it does it get the green tick for your config? Um, so this lets us uh, run simulations against the what conditional access engine. We pass in the inputs and it tells us whether you know the MFA policy will be applied or not. And here with Pester, you can define this policy. So you say SharePoint requires MFA, and that's the policy, and then you write a sample, right? Like this user, it could be a bunch of users, one user or more, um, and then you say, okay, this user is trying to use the SharePoint app, uh, and you say when they try to do that, it the policy that results in it should contain MFA, right? So you have this set up, it's automated and it's running every day. And the moment someone changes something in the policy, add some exclusions, etc., the test can fail and you'll know, right, something's broken and uh, your policy is no longer being, being implemented. So that's the whole idea behind, like the one of the reasons we started Maester was, yes, the API is nice, but if you're not using it or writing tests like this, it doesn't really add uh, much value. And this is where uh, like part of Maester was born to be able to test that. So for example, that thing I told you about the guest uh, story, where they created a policy for guests and they expected MFA would be applied. Something like this written for guests would have caught that up early, as soon as someone um, deleted the group, for example. Right, so identity is the sort of the new control plane. We are moving away from firewalls and that is what's protecting everything. We write tests for, you know, basic code that we do. And this is one of the like the more important things and it's becoming really complicated to, uh, as you evolve so many different sorts of policies you need to set up. Um, so Maester with Pester tests gives you this framework to um, test that. Right, so, as part of this, we included like uh, GitHub, and I'll show you some examples. Um, so if I switch to GitHub, um, so once you set it up in GitHub, uh, the test will run, and uh, we included this integration with Markdown, so you get uh, like a neat result. So one of the issues I had is when I started this, I went looking for some package that would give a nice UI from the end unit test, and basically there was nothing. like it was all very cryptic and it didn't give what we needed. So if you wanted the test, you fa the test failed, you wanted a quick summary like this, uh, see what passed and failed. And then we even go into the details of, okay, which one passed and what didn't fail. Um, and it includes specific instructions about your tenant saying, okay, these are the conditional access policies um, which have this particular thing we're checking for. So it got the green tick. Right, so all of that's integrated into um, into that master what into the package sort of thing that we built. Uh, same way we've done for Azure DevOps as well. So we have um, at the Azure DevOps job, uh, you have the test results, and you get this neat integration with Azure where you can see the things that are broken. Don't know why it's uh, doing that. Yeah. So you get this and you can like you can even now assign a bug or a task to someone and then you know have that person activated. So you get that neat integration with Azure DevOps and bring those DevOps practices um, to your tenant. Right. So yeah, so we want to add Azure automation, like give more guidance if you are using other tools uh, to on how you set it up. So uh, all of that's part of the, the docs here. Right. Right, um, yeah, so that's the integration. Uh, we do email alerts as well. So if I switch over to my email, let me see if I am. 
Yep. So if I open up email, so you can set up as part of the GitHub action, you can set up an email alert and you get like, you can set up this uh, email alert to go through. Um, so every day you can have the job run and send an alert to a DL, et cetera. So it wraps it around with a nice experience for IT admins or you know the cybersecurity team to know if the policies they set up are all working the way they should be. Right, so yeah, that's uh, it was all part of creating that easy to use uh, scenario. Yeah, so again, the same practices you do with Pester, right? You find some bug or an issue, you find a security issue, uh, then what you would do is write a test for it, and then now that test is running every day as a daily automation, and it will be able to pick up any issues, et cetera, that you run across. Yeah, so how am I doing on time? Almost on time, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the team. Uh, Fabian and Thomas are from Germany. Who uh, Fabian did some Sentinel pester tests that he start, wrote, and that's when I connected with him and said, like, look, I have this idea. We Let's get together and build this. And then Thomas had this um, AIDS car that he was building, so we got together, and there are lots of tests uh, we're adding, and it's more like we're looking for contributors, others to join in and expand, build on this, uh, and start using it. Uh, lots of others helped out. Uh, we have Fred here, Justin, um, and Andrew, we've, who we shared ideas, um, got feedback on. Justin helped uh, tell how to use Pester to read the values out, so we can give like detailed results. Um, so we got all of that working. So we used Platypus. Uh, that's the all three docusaurus uh, is used for the site. Um, so if you see in the website. Uh, you should show it on the website. Um, it includes like all of the different commands. Um, you can say, say the invoke command, all of these docs, they all generated using all three, uh, the DocuSRS integration. Um, so this is all neatly tied in with that. So all of this is open source, the build process, et cetera, that you can go in and see. Um, same way with all of the, each, every test is documented. Um, and we sort of give the out of the box ones, we give reasons for why that test is there and how it maps to the, the MITRE framework and so on. Cool. Any questions? Please share your feedback for the session. Happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Yes, yeah, good call. So if you're on Windows, you have this weird thing, right, with Pester uh, when you're doing it for the first time. And we know everyone will stumble across it. So I had to test it out a few times and uh, like give the steps here. So where I say skip check and then do all of these things. So someone who's going just an out of the box Windows box, they will hit less barriers. So um, I do include these steps there. And uh, we, we do call it out in the FAQ as well and say, usually if you just run it, you'll get hit this 3.4 conflict. So the first time experience is not going to be great if you are a completely new person. And um, hopefully with, if they followed this guide, um, if they just copy and paste that, it'll install the latest version of Pesta. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a good call out. So yeah, we haven't thought of that. You should definitely. Hopefully, there won't be breaking changes with the minor <laughs> releases. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, we we do want that. We just didn't have the time, so we thought let's focus and do one thing well, and so we focused on conditional access and the intra tests cover a wide number. So the intra ID security config, 
Um, they do a lot more like FIDO2 and like various other settings. So it, it tests there about like 40 odd settings uh, and configuration that it tests. Uh, but yeah, definitely the plan is we are looking for more collaborators for like Intune. We, we know that's like the CISA have their set of rules as well. So we want to sort of integrate that as well in so you can just run, run it and use the same framework. Because at the end of the day, they all do the same thing. We wanted to just create a framework that can be repeatable, where you can plug in. Uh, like, end of the day, these are pester tests, right? So you can plug in anything, uh, whether it's a CISA reports, et cetera, you can do that. Um, we want to just give more guidance here. So the CISA stuff, we want to add and say, this is how you can do this, because you will hit issues, right? Uh, when it's running in GitHub and all the different things, like how do you do the auth is another common thing. Um, so with auth, like this, creating this doc itself took time to say how to use GitHub using Workload Federation, but you don't have any secrets, you don't need to worry about rotation, so it's very secure. Um, so we gave all that, but we also included like as a fallback, how you can just use secret, but it's not, not recommended at all. And <laughs> the right ways to do um, it without any secrets or certificates, uh, it's a really easy way. Like you can get this, if you follow the steps, in about 15 minutes, you'll have it working um, just by putting, copying and reusing this. So it does require an app registration? Yes. Uh, you're not able to just run it uh, on command? You can run it on the command line without anything. So like I, the demo I showed you just now, I just uh, I just did a connect, uh, we put connect master which puts in all the scopes, but it's basically calling connect graph. So um, I can, do, the per yes, yeah, yeah. The initially the global admin, whoever needs to consent to those uh, permission scopes that are required, and then uh, you you can do that. So you, you can run it from the command line and just have it working, and you're happy with the report. You can stop there, but the better you get, the more use once you set up the automation and have it running every day. Sorry? Are you accepting pull requests for your tests? Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. We are, it's an open source project and the more folks that want to join and share tests for the different products, because there are so many, right? Like we do tests for like Entra or something, but you have Intune, you have Sentinel and like various other products. It doesn't need to be even Microsoft product. Like I'm thinking others like Jamf and various other apps. As long as there's an API you can build. This is more about bringing those, the DevOps, Sec DevOps experience to people who have not done it before. So like for people in this conference, this might all sound like really simple, you know that. Uh, like we are, I'm preaching to the audience, right? But um, with other, this is more intended for a lot more, you know, the IT audience. But it gives you guardrails and the guidance uh, at a higher level. Yes, so we are working on that, uh, which is where Fred's uh, help will come in. So we want to use like a config file that you can define and say what to include or exclude. Right now, the way to do it is to do a copy paste. So we wanted to get it right. So um, we, we left it till after the, the first release. Um, so if I switch to VS Code, if I can find it. Um, yeah, so what we wanted to do is, uh, what we've done is we've created these folders. Uh, if you see here, we've created this folder called custom. And the idea is you would uh, put your own tests in here. For now, what you can do is simply copy, copy these tests across into this custom folder and then you can, um, you can work on them. The, the other thing I wanted to call out is over time, we are going to be adding new tests, right? More PRs or fixing uh, issues in the out of the box tests. So we included this update uh, master command. And then you run that, it will, uh, what we are doing is we're actually embedding the tests, pester test into the module. So you don't need, it doesn't go out. 
Uh, every new build includes the latest tests. Um, and we just ask, just prompt you before we overwrite all those existing tests that we have, just telling that you're going to do. So the idea is you would put your changes into that custom folder. It's more like a convention. Into the custom folder, you put in all of your tests. We don't touch any of that. But things that are in the master folder and the AIDS car, uh, we would overwrite, but we always, like we ask a lot of prompts before we remove and add all those things in. Um, and that way, that's an easy way to sort of get the latest version of the pester tests that we are shipping. Why would you save the newest version and is that Sorry? Yes. Uh, no, I have 106. Yeah, so yeah, this is, I think, the import process. I think after you update, uh, I, I need to fix that. I think when you do an import, it reloads it, right? So even though I installed it, um, it didn't refresh the one. Oh, no, it's still, yeah, I need to fix it. <laughs> so this particular code, it was actually Copilot that gave. So I put the comment saying, um, you know, to do, find the latest diff module and do it. And so it generated the code. It did work fine. So what it does is it check, it does a find module and then it just checks with the install module and sees if the version number is different. But I think maybe it's uh, it's loading something different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I need to fix that. The other one I, with uh, Justin in the room is, so with these tests, um, you can't use the, use the pester test module because you need to do an authentication and I think you can't, I can't do the auth in that, right? So there's, there's a catch. I can, I can do just run test like this if I do a connect uh, from then, like that works, um, but I'm not able to test it from here because I think it. Inside the right. right. Oh, so it'll have the context. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry. No. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So just to repeat what Justin said, there's a there's a setting, and we'll share the setting. Right. There's a setting where you can say to use the PowerShell version, not the one that's there out of the box. And then. Use the extension PowerShell console, and then it'll use the same context of the console PowerShell. And so then whatever you're connected as, it will be able to run in that. Because out of the box, it runs in a different run space, which doesn't have the tokens or the authentication, so that wouldn't work. But we'll put all of that in the docs uh, about using, um, you know, doing those click-throughs to run. Cool, any other questions? Yes. Um, in my organization, we have a bunch of pest tests that we've written that we can run against basically any VM that is yep. in our on-prem environment. And I think it might be used to have a front end like this. Is there any yeah. considerations of putting out the front end from yes, yeah. Yeah, so when we were building this itself, uh, like uh, Fabian said, like this would be like the reporting in the HTML is really cool. Like we should pull it out as a different module that you can use it and you know pass it into the, the module and do like even now there, there are different commandlets so you can pass that in and send it through um, but yeah we can yeah we can definitely do like because creating a nice looking report like this is a challenge uh, and uh, if you look in the module like you can see how we do it yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just running the, like, it's basically pester, right? So it takes those reports out and it does it. We, we did add some extra commands. So um, if I open Maester, so th this is the source code for Maester, but we, we did add some commandlets for let me see if I get to the right folder. Docs, yeah. So in PowerShell, we have 
um, this commandlet called add MT result detail. So this is the one where you can pass in like which conditional access policies uh, were failing. It supports like a markdown format for each test. Um, so you can uh, like I'll open some of these tests. Give me a second. Yeah, so we have all these tests and for each test, you can also have a markdown where you sort of describe what the issue is. Um, and that is what we use when we generate the report. Um, so when you write the commandlet for a given test, um, you can include this markdown or you can call, there's a, a method saying add test results and you can pass in you know, the conditional access policies or the groups. And that is how we create those deep links in to say, okay, you found an issue, this is where you need to go and fix it. So um, yeah, we spent a bit of time trying to get that experience nice um, because if you're less, left with just the errors, you still need to now go and search and find which policy was causing the issue and like that cycle should be short. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed the session. Yes. <laughs>